Hello everybody, my name is Blake. Today I'd like to walk you through a water shader that I am publicly releasing. So if you're here, that means you probably already found the download link uh, in a Discord or whatever. But if not, or if you haven't found the download link, then I'll have one down in the description. Uh, brief disclaimer, the first disclaimer that I have is that the Skybox is not my property. I will put credits in the description in case you want to dig around for it, but I can't redistribute it. Um, another disclaimer is I'm assuming that you already have some world building knowledge in Unity, like being able to set up a, uh, a VRC world prefab, that kind of stuff. And then you're going to want to know what render textures are. Uh, you feel free to like Google that if you would like. Um, some programs that I use in the tutorial are Blender, GIMP, and then a like a, the, snip, the Microsoft snipping tool so that I just like... It's built in Windows 10, it just takes a little screenshot of a section, but that's only for a more advanced feature that I don't have, don't have implemented in this current world. Um, real quick, if you want to view the shader in action, just to know what I am, what you're getting yourself into. Uh, it's an interactive water shader, and it doesn't work off colliders, it's, it's visually based, so any old avatar will work as long as it's not on the default layer, and that will be explained further. Uh, the last disclaimer is that this part, this um, shader is incredibly GPU intensive, so it's recommended to have this set up to a toggle right here. Um, so if I press this, it deactivates not only the skybox, but, or not only the water, but also the skybox. Uh, I don't recommend setting it up that way. I would just disable whatever plane or the rig to um, create the water and leave the skybox as is. But yeah, I also have a couple other buttons that change the skybox. Uh, I'll just show you one, cause well, yeah, I'll show you one of them. So like, this is just like a nice little tropical island, and the water changes with it. But yeah, without further ado, let's um, let's get into setting it up, shall we? Uh, first of all, you're gonna import import the VRC SDK. I'm not gonna go over too much how to do that. Uh, once you get the and you're gonna set it up for like you're setting up a world. Uh, this VRC world, though, you're going to want to set this to 90, and you're going to want to add a VRC trigger so the event handler stops complaining. Uh, this update time in milliseconds is just how fast it updates dynamic materials. I don't know what that means, but 90 is typically good for me. Alright, and now, so, once you do that, you should go into VRC SDK, uh, show build control panel, this section will pop up somewhere, like, just not like that. Not like that either, like this. So go ahead, and then there's going to be a button here that says layers are not set up properly. Click that, click do it. Uh, if you want, you can back up your world before clicking do it, but I usually don't. Uh, then another button will show up that says uh, collision, or fix collision, it's fix physics collision matrix or something along that lines. Click that, same same deal. Uh, you'll Then the world's set up for just any basic VR chat world, you, which you need to do before you... Uh, before you use the shader. So once you do that, you're gonna go into assets, import package, custom package, and uh, wherever you downloaded the Unity package to, you're just gonna import that. Uh, this folder still VR should show up, click on that, water shader, water surface, and take this prefab, drag it on over here. I already did that, so I already have one. Uh, I'm First off, I'm gonna show you how to test it because of, and how it, how it works with interacting. So if I take a sphere, a sphere, reset, and I move this back and forth, uh, you'll notice nothing happens. So that did pop up. It probably shouldn't for you. So nothing happens. Um, well, that's because this is on the wrong layer. So this camera right here is what picks up interactions. Uh, any of these layers will interact with it. You can go ahead and modify those, but there could, could be like some unintended consequences. Uh, if you enable default, this water, it will actually interact with itself with the water and everything will go to the max and it won't ripple anymore. So set this, to, I usually set my test to walk through and now if you drag it back and forth, there should be ripples. Now you may have guessed based off of the uh, camera that I showed you that it doesn't matter if this collider is here. So I'm just actually, I'm going to not reset it, I'm going to remove it. Don't want documentation unity. So now I've removed the mesh glider and it still works. Uh, the only thing with spheres particularly is the bottoms won't interact because when you view it from the top down, uh, you can't see it. So the way to fix that is to, instead of using this sphere, you want to create a sphere in Blender, 
and you're going to click go into edit mode, duplicate the mesh, reverse the normals. I can actually show you what that looks like real quick, uh, but I don't want to spend like too much time on it. And you can do this for any um, you can do this for any mesh that you want to interact with it. Uh, cubes have a little bit of a weird thing to them where if you set it if you set it to walk through, the camera doesn't see it because it, it would only pick up the surface and the sides are way too thin. So if you go ahead and rotate that, it'll start interacting. Uh, the way to fix this is a little bit more complicated than just flipping the normals. I personally, yeah. So first I'm gonna show you how to duplicate and flip the normals, go into edit mode, duplicate, press Z0, mesh, normals, flip normals, you're done. It should interact with both. If it was a sphere, the bottom would interact. Um, if you have a more complicated objects, chances are it's going to interact a lot better than the cube because simply because there's more sections for it to collide with. Since it doesn't work off of colliders, um, it will work with any part of your VR chat avatar as long as it's not on the default layer because mo usually players are on this player layer right here or player local. So let's see, that covers how to test it and how to set something up to interact with it. So let's go over changing the skybox. Change, to change the skybox, I'm going to delete this. Um, you're going to need a equirectangular panoramic image. So uh, this is going to be for the panosphere, so I'm just going to drag this here. But you actually need to click on it and press Ctrl D to duplicate to make the second one. Set this one to cube, latitude, longitude, um, and limit it to 1024. Hit apply. And makes a cube map. The reason that this this has to it's just like an incompatibility with the shader things. Like this has to be a cube map. Uh, I actually copied this, or I, I duplicated some of the code from the default uh, cube map reflection in the the Unity um, documentation. Just like the so the basic like document. So this is just like a modified uh, standard shader. So that's how you that's just how you change the reflection. I think this one's really pretty, but it doesn't make for a very good skybox. So I'm just going to go back to the previous one. Select uh, the material I'm clicking on is water surface, and I'm changing the property cube map. No, not shaders, cube maps. There we go. All right. So that covers changing the skybox. Now let's cover uh, resizing it. So in order to resize it, you have to click on this water surface and change it to whatever size you want. Um, if it's a square, there are certain steps that you have to skip or that you can skip. But if not, I'm going to just cover those a little separately. Uh, first off, if it is square, all you have to do is rescale and then click on this. And you're going to want to set this to five times the Z scale. Uh, I say five times the Z scale because if it's a rectangle, then you wouldn't make it. Then that's the dimension that you want to uh, base it off of. Uh, if you wanted to make it a rectangle, there's some extra setup. So let's set X back to one. So let's go, go ahead. And, so uh, first off, you're going to take this camera in and you're going to want to make sure this resolution has the same aspect ratio as the plane. Uh, so Z corresponds to Y and X corresponds to X. Uh, this plane right here, you're also going to want... Uh, this plane is a little weird. The aspect ratio is going to be the same as two of these pasted together, like side by side. So if this is uh, 1 to 1, this is 2 to 1. If this is 2 to 1, this is 4 to 1. But since we're making this 1 to 2, we're going to make this 1 to 1. Uh, I don't know how much sense that made. Uh, unfortunately, when you do that, there's you also have to go down here and change this plane so that it has the same aspect ratio. And then uh, this camera right here doesn't always update. Oh, what is going wrong here? Yeah, so this camera doesn't always update its aspect ratio, so you have to change its size from like 2 and then back to 1, which just caused some strange things. Uh, uh, moving on, so we change the resolution of this. You theoretically change the resolution of this. So now let's change this setting right here. There's a setting for aspect ratio, and that we'll set that to 1 to 2, which is what we decided on. 
And then last but not least, we're going to make the sure the camera's aspect ratio updated. It looks like it hasn't, so all we have to do is change it to 9 and then change it back to 10. It can be, you can change it to any number, but you just need to change it uh, so that it updates the aspect ratio. The camera's aspect ratio for the viewport is automatically determined by this render texture. So changing this to a rectangle is what made this um, change its shape. Uh, there's a current. There's currently a glitch where this edge will bleed through onto this, but it will be fixed in later versions as well as uh, there will be a little slider to correct it in case it still pops up unexpectedly. Uh, later versions being the one that you have right now. So I'm going to go change all these back. All right, this is probably one of the more advanced features. Uh, basically, if you want to, if you have some ter interesting terrain that you want to bounce off of the water, uh, instead of an interesting terrain, I'm just going to add a cube down here. Uh, we're going to want a collision mask to make sure that the water bounces off that cube. Even if this were interacting with the camera, it wouldn't look right because it bends really strangely next to it. So, uh, what we're going to do is, I've included a render texture called Call Mask, uh, which is just Collision Mask. Uh, you're going to go into Play Mode so that none of these changes are going to be saved, so it'll undo everything when you're done. You're going to take uh, this uh, camera, Camera In, duplicate this, bring it over here, and I'm just going to go over this quickly. Change the um, pulling mat color to black. Pulling mask to everything and then hide walkthrough so that that little sphere doesn't get picked up. You're going to change the near so that it can't see the water, or the near so it can see the cube or terrain. You're going to change the far so that it can't see the water anymore. So you're also going to change the render texture to call mask. So before I recommend this is the last thing you do because if you make any changes, you'll have to update it. Uh, it's just kind of like icing on the cake basically. So now we're going to create a 3D object plane, reset this, and we're going to move it over to this. Take the main camera, where is it? Um, actually, yeah, so this is set x to negative 14. I'm going to reset this thing's position, set x to negative 14, set this to orthographic, bring this up, rotate it so that it's looking down at the plane, it should fit perfectly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take unlit debug, another thing included. We're going to move uh, call mask onto that, and we're going to drag that there. Um, if call mask doesn't update, just like does that do it? No. Yeah. So change its resolution, and then change it back. Make sure that didn't mess up the camera. Yeah, everything looks fine. All right. So we the reason we update made sure that was updated is so that we can see the preview down here of the render texture. We want to make sure that these two images look the same. So I'm just going to rotate the camera 180 degrees, and those two images now look the same. Um, you're going to go into game, and now uh, chances are you're in free aspect, so you're going to want to create a new uh, setting and do it like 512 by 512. Set it to fixed resolution, label it, and then add it. I already have one. Uh, if it's too small, it's gonna be it's not it's gonna be a little weird like this. But if you size it up, oh, it, that five twelve is gonna be whatever resolution you set the collision mask to be. Um, so once you have it like this, so that it's not getting any bigger, go into snipping tool and just capture this little section. File save as I almost always save it in water surface M. I'm just gonna replace capture. Yes, I would like to replace it. I've recorded this like a lot of times because I'm just bad at recording. So uh, I already have a couple of versions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this capture right here and we're going to edit it in, um, in GIMP or Photoshop, whichever one you have. I have it set to double click it. It'll open up in GIMP. If you double click it, it'll probably open it up in Paint unless you've set it up to open up in GIMP. So you might just need a file import. So now just take like the magic wand tool, select this, um, click delete, image, auto crop image, file, overwrite. You're done. With, you're almost done with that. I keep forgetting to do this. Uh, just pick completely white and paint that spot and then completely black and paint that spot. 
you have more complicated terrain, this might be a little bit more of a task than just what I did there. Uh, you might need to delete all of the terrain and then paint the empty space all white or something along those lines. Or you might be able to just throw it in as is as long as where the water is is black and there's no black spots on the terrain because I have a threshold for uh, certain colors to bounce off. So basically if it has like, technically uh, even something like this should, no not that, something like this should theoretically bounce off, I'm just not 100% sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to overwrite that. This code changes that. Yeah, so now we have this new collision mask. We can, um, I already hit play so that everything undid, which is not smart. You probably should have tested it first, but eh, you live and you learn. So now if we go to, or we can actually, yeah, so it already deleted that extra camera. So now if we go into render plane and we drag capture onto that, uh, we can bring this little sphere over here and you'll see that it bounces off the cube. Super fancy. Yeah. Um, there, you can also do transparency masks, which are uh, pretty much the same. I'm just going to use this one right here. So basically anything that's white, it will show up as water. And in water surface, you turn this all the way up and the black disappears. You use these two effects in conjunction, I'm, which I'm actually going to show you how I would personally do that. Image, colors, invert, file, export as. I'm actually going to overwrite capture one. Yeah, so now capture one is a version like this. Um, I'm going to click on render plane and I'm going to make this capture one. Get rid of this. Wait, so I want, actually, I want that one to be on the water surface. Yeah, so now if I go into this, I made a little mini pool. And you can do this to set up multiple, like, little pools right next to each other that you don't necessarily want to interact with each other. Um, the reason that it shows only this is because the, I set this all the way up. And then this slider on top of that will affect the uh, transparency of that in case you want to make like more clear water or something along those lines. All right, so using those in conjunction allows you to create much more interesting um, pool layouts than just like a single square. You can make sort of uh, irregular shaped pools. Just make sure that the collision mask is relatively high resolution compared to the actual uh, ripple effect. It's not like it's going to be rendering in real time. The only two uh, textures that are rendered in real time are render plane and camera in. So you don't want to make those too large. <laughs> I find that the limit for um, the limit for my per my own graphics card, uh, if both of these combined is above forty megabytes, I start lagging. Like it goes, it's very it's a very sharp drop off. Like it's either ninety or it's eleven. There's no in between. Uh, oh, one one last note uh, for just some miscellaneous things, I guess. Uh, if you want to, if you want to change the resolution, so say you have two water surfaces, and you're only going to have one activated at the same time, uh, they're going to need a different. They're going to. I'm just going to highlight all of the things that you're going to need to duplicate. These four items, you're going to need to make separate versions for every plane of water that you make if you want to make like uh, separate qualities. Otherwise, you start getting weird stuff like you see it interacting on both sides, which I guess is kind of cool. Uh, I wouldn't particularly recommend having two cameras set up, but it's just because it's like super laggy. Uh, in certain situations, you do need more than one camera. Like if you have uh, several pools isolated at different heights, you need different cameras for those. But uh, an optimization that you can make is if you edit the code, the green screen algorithm that I use, you can actually change this to an R8, which cuts its memory down significantly. There is still some CPU overhead RG32. What I think, I, what, did, what did I have it at? Yeah, it should be RG32.
there are some things that I didn't explain. They're either a little, they're they're kind of uh, more advanced settings, and if you can, if you understand how it works, you can figure them out. I'm not going to go too in depth in how to cover them. All right. Um, I guess that covers everything. Thank you for watching, and thank you for implementing my shader. I will see you later.